you very much, Paul. Welcome back to the show. Uh, coming up in the next half hour, Del Shannon will be out here to uh, play and uh, sing with our band, Runaway, right? Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow on the uh, program, Zsa Zsa Gabor, Olivia Brown, and nine-year-old opera singers from PS 107 in Brooklyn. That'll be tomorrow night. Uh, and uh, let's bring out our next guest at this uh, moment right now. If you're spending February, February, in Ohio this year, you can catch my next guest. We'll be working at the Cleveland Comedy Club on the 18th through the 21st, and also at the Akron Canton Comedy Club on the 25th through the 28th. Folks, please say hello to a good friend, comedian George Miller. Thank you very much. How you doing? I am too. Where y'all from? I am too. Good. Good. I'm recording this one. I'm recording. Uh, they got the Sony in the back. So even if you hate me, laugh anyway, because I already have a lot of tapes where I bomb. Thank you very much. So, or way too late. Or Oral Roberts said to his viewers, "Send me a hundred dollars, or I'm gonna die." It's kind of a cash or croak program, I guess, right? Or, so I sent him fifty bucks. If he gets sick, I'll send the other fifty, I guess. Uh, what was a thought, you know? And the Iran-Contra thing just goes on and on. Now, yesterday, the White House denied that Reagan knew anything at all about his prostate operation. <laughs> ow! ow! Yes, to you, too. Another ow to you, yeah. And uh, I want to talk about food tonight. 7-Eleven uh, had a great sign. Fresh coffee or it's free. So apparently, if they give you old, stale coffee, you don't have to pay for it. Quite a deal. <laughs> And I'm in at Denny's getting lunch because I spare no expense. And I got, the, I got the salad with the small tomatoes. There was a stem attached to one of the tomatoes. And there was a Mexican attached to the stem. So I... <laughs> They're booing. And so like one minute old, why are they booing so soon? Now, I, I was in this fancy restaurant, those hoity-toity places, boy. Real nervy waiter wanted to make sure I knew about the tipping procedure. Comes right over to my table. Be sure to leave 15 or 20 percent. Oh no, I eat everything on my plate. <laughs> they specialize, those fancy places, they really specialize. The butter waiter came over and gave us some butter. The coffee waiter came over and gave us some coffee. The water waiter came over and gave us some water. The head waiter came over. They really specialize those places. Listen, if, you, if you've seen me on this show before, you know I am the comic who's always looking for a gimmick, something that will shoot me to the top. For a while, I was the, the irritated comic. Here's some stuff that I don't like. I don't like it when people give their animals too much credit. Yeah, my cat, she's mad at me today. Oh, yeah, she's planning on moving out. Yeah, right, yeah. I don't like a lot of television shows. I saw putting on the hits. I felt like turning on the gas. <laughs> And Siskel and Ebert are always at the movies together because neither one of them can get a date. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why a fat guy and a gay boy. What a mystery. <laughs> That's just a joke. I said that for a cheap laugh. Siskel is not gay, but the other one really is a wad. And CBS has a new morning show, and the emphasis, they say, is on humor. And one of the hosts is Mariette Hartley, who's about as funny as running your toe in a furniture. <laughs> and, Vanna, and Vanna White has a new book out. Vanna White has a book. It's called uh, Vanna Speaks. Yeah, but just barely. <laughs> and Barbara Streisand did a special, a cable special. They kept bragging her first televised concert in 20 years. Well, I can top that. I haven't done any. <laughs> well, I did do one. I did ask that not, not true. I, I did do one. I talked about my mom. My mom always gives lectures. Even if she doesn't know a person, she'll give the old lecture. One time we're on a bus as a kid about nine or ten years old, got his arm dangling out the window like kids do. My mom didn't know him. She had to give a lecture. Young man, that's a good way to lose an arm. Kid was sarcastic. He said, thank you. Could you tell us some of the other ways? <laughs> 
Does your mom always make a big deal out of everything? Would you like a cracker while I've got them out? Oh, yeah, Mom. Wouldn't want to blow this golden opportunity. <laughs> oh, and I had this blind date, okay? And, boy, you know, I shouldn't say this about the women because men do it all the time, too. She kept bragging about how young she looks. She's about 35. She says, yeah, sometimes I even get asked for ID. Do you think I look underage? I said, well, maybe for Social Security, but, uh... <laughs> well, she was real overweight, you know, and then she kept asking for compliments all night long. Do you think I have bedroom eyes? Yeah, and a kitchen butt, too. <laughs> hey, I really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Now, did you get any other, uh, you were on the show a while back and you asked for suggestions to help you find a gimmick. Yeah, we gave a post office box and yeah. we literally did have uh, hundreds of replies and we said that the winner, although it wasn't really a contest because yeah. NBC has a log, it's contest, the winner would get a can of chili. So these are like the, <laughs> eight. well, you used to give away those sponges. So, yeah. uh, so anyway, uh, these are the best eight or some of the best eight. And number will, will one. these people get chili? No, and just number one will get right. chili. Now, okay. these are the things that I'm supposed to do to become famous and, and have a nice gimmick. Okay. Viewers sent these to Viewers your mail. Say, yeah, this is, uh, you got okay. some strange people watching your show. Yeah. Number eight. Yeah. I want, this is like a top ten list, but we're not doing the thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. During every appearance, announce you are looking for a good clam bar. That was good. That was good. I, don't, I don't exactly understand that, but I like it. <laughs> Number seven, associate yourself with the Kennedy family. In fact, say you are Ted Kennedy. Uh -huh. Well, that's, yeah. That's something. You can't yeah. argue with success. No, no. That's true. Okay, number six, you need a big, ugly scar. <laughs> well, you, you can't have the sweater. Yeah, that's sort of, yeah. I was going to say my head. But, okay. <laughs> number five, publicly state on The Letterman Show, you are the bastard son of Martin Milner. <laughs> <laughs> These are your viewers. <laughs> I like okay. that. All right. <laughs> Number four, number four, why aren't those guys booing? Number four, advocate devil worship for youngsters. Uh -huh. no, number three, sponsor a comedy competition. After all, Bob Hope is a mediocre golfer. Yeah. Not very nice. Yeah. Number clever, two, though. clever, though. clever I yeah. thought, yeah. Number two, change your name to Noon. Noon. Noon, yeah. yeah. I guess yeah. I got high, I could be high noon. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And number one, this is for the chili. For the chili. For the chili. Commit suicide. You'll only be remembered after you're dead. Well, that's very nice. Are you going to mail them off the chili? Well, thank you. One person got the chili, number one. Uh, that's Kathy Kwai from Seattle, Washington. And I am from Seattle. You get a can of chili. You get a can of chili. And uh, uh, some people will think because I'm from Seattle that it's favoritism. Yeah. It is not. I really thought that was the best entry. But just to, what do the politicians say, to avoid any appearance of uh -huh. impropriety, as soon as Kathy gets the chili, she has agreed for her and her entire family to move to Orlando, Florida, where they'll be spending the rest of their lives. So that's it. Thanks for sending in those uh, entries. How is your family, speaking of family? Well, I went to Seattle at Christmas time, and my Uncle Lewis was very, very depressed. Did I meet Lewis once a long time uh, ago? I don't think so. That, no, I don't think yeah. so. He's, uh, for 30 years, Lewis thought he could do hypnosis, and then recently he found out it was just his normal conversation that was putting people to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> See, that must have been depressing. It was a really depressing, yeah, <laughs> yeah. extremely depressing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you just came in from California? Yeah. How are things yeah. in Hollywood? Holly well, you know, my Hollywood friends and I have been concerned about a number, uh -huh. about a number of things. Yeah. One of them, and I wrote it down in this, this gimmick sheet list. This is from the Hollywood Press, I, these smutty, dirty tabloids. This is from a personals column in the Hollywood Press. I'm looking for a lady to show me a few things. The one I need should have had experience with eight or nine hundred different men. If you qualify, call right away. No tramps, please. <laughs> George Miller will be in Ohio at your big uh, tour through the uh, Buckeye State. No tramps, State. please. 18th uh, through the 21st at the Cleveland Comedy Club. George, good to see Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. We'll be right back.
No, I wasn't smoking. <laughs> Uh, our next guest is a frequent visitor to, to, to this show, visitor, frequent visitor to the show. And this Friday and Saturday, he will be appearing at Chuckles in Mineola, Long Island. I'd be proud to go there. Uh, he'll be there from, uh, actually, from April 14th through the 18th. He'll be at the Comedy Cafe in Charleston, South Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back a very funny man, George Miller. <laughs> The, state, the statement of the year, I think, so far is Jerry Collins, the racetrack owner from Florida. He gave Oral Roberts $1.3 million and said, Roberts needs psychiatric help. <laughs> One time I went to budget psychiatrist, three bucks a visit, oh, you get what you pay for? I'm threatening suicide. He's saying you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> How about that guy, Robert McFarlane, the guy high up in government? He tried to suicide with a Valium, right? And he was in the hospital for a while, and then he got out. And this is true now. I thought this was a nice gesture. It was in the paper. Somebody sent him a video cassette of James Stewart's It's a Wonderful Life. Very uplifting movie, yeah. I sent him Blue Velvet. Now he's back in the hospital again. <laughs> you see the Grammys? Burt Backrack and Carol Bayer Sager, they won the award for most impressed with their own award. <laughs> The Baby M case, I was really glad for the Stern family that they won. It doesn't have anything to do with a contract. I just don't want to see any kid having to grow up with the name Whitehead. <laughs> <laughs> applause already! There's already applause. I'm feeling good. I lost a few pounds. I've been on the NyQuil diet for about eight and a half years now. And, uh, Hey, you drink enough NyQuil, it'll help you lose weight. It doesn't really curb your appetite, but most of your food falls on the floor. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of comedy clubs. A lot of comedy clubs are named after types of laughter. David um, uh, admitted, I was going to say, he mentioned that I'm going to be at uh, Chuckles in Mineola, in Mineola on Friday and Saturday, Chuckles. And about a year ago, I was at a real good club in, in Seattle called Giggles. And, yeah, next month I'm going to titters and snorts. <laughs> I travel around with my wife and daughter. She's 13 now, and my daughter is four, so it's working out pretty good. More applause. More applause. Okay, I, I haven't always done this. I used to sell hearing aids door to door. That's a tough job because your best prospects never answer. <laughs> I recently flew up to Seattle. I hate those irritating signs that you see on every airplane. No smoking, no fumer. <laughs> I don't mind not smoking, but I will not give up my fumer. <laughs> and I'm visiting my mom, and your mom is such a big influence on you. I remember when I was a little kid, something I'll never forget, my mom said, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing well. And because of that, to this day, I haven't done a damn thing. <laughs> applause, more applause. The third applause. <laughs> At one point, for a couple months as I was growing up, we lived with my grandparents, I think because of their influence. To this day, I still get along well with elderly people, unless they brag about their age. Look at me! I'm 94 years old. Well, good. That means you'll be passing away soon. <laughs> hey, you know what I hate is when television insults your intelligence. Arm and hammer baking soda. Ask for it by name. What are you going to do? Use a code? Hey, give me a box of baking soda. Butt and pliers. The control of a roll-on. Yeah, you gotta watch those spray cans. They'll fly all over the house. <laughs> Saturday's my favorite day because I always get to watch my favorite program, The Outdoor Sportsman. Boy, if there's anything I can't get enough of, it's televised fishing. <laughs> Well, 
Why don't they just show somebody mowing their lawn? <laughs> hey, you want to watch the Super Bowl? Are you kidding? This guy's about to bait his hook. <laughs> hey, I enjoyed talking to you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. It was funny. Thank yeah, you very much. Funny. Oh, I forgot to mention her. I, nice job. I don't. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going at uh, Boston. Uh, at oh, Nick's, stop Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Plugs. I had. To, I promised it. We've Nick's, already got two in Nick's already. Next comedy stop on May seventh, eighth, and ninth. The best comedy club in Boston. Mm -hmm. That's an extra two hundred. And also, I'm going to be at. You know, George McKelvey used to work at the Horn. He has a club in no, Denver. I'm going to be with George on Memorial Day weekend. Mm -hmm. at George McKelvey's Just visiting club the home or working in, there. Uh, Denver. Well, I'll be doing both. Now, I want to tell you, in, at George McKelvey's club. Every Wednesday is low self-esteem night, <laughs> and everybody with uh, with low, with low self-esteem gets in for half price. And of course, when I'm there, I always do a lot of uh, audience participation. Uh -huh. If you're garbage and you know it, clap your hands. Uh -huh. Well, that's good. So that'll be uh, Memorial Day weekend. Memorial Day yeah, weekend. Yeah. Maybe you could fly in. It's good to hear George McKelvey's name again, though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so how you been? Busy. I've I know been, you're busy. Yeah, I've been pretty busy. We just flew in from Kansas City, and of yeah. course. Any it's a time great I'm, town. It is a very nice town, and every any, any time I'm on an airplane, of course, I always immediately spread the rumor that Phil Donahue is on board. So. <laughs> and people are looking, and they're bobbing their heads and all that. And, well, why do you do that? I don't know. I tried it with your name one time and got a lot of blank stares. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, that wasn't very nice. No, I know. I'm All right, let's uh, let's do a commercial, and we'll come back here and see if we can't get George to. Hotel accommodations for most guests of Late Night with David Letterman furnished by the Berkshire Place and Omni Classic Hotel in exchange for this announcement. For reservations at Omni Hotels in the U.S. and Europe, call toll-free 800-THE-OMNI. <coughs> I don't know. George, seriously, come back. I'd like to hear more about this George McKelvey. <laughs> I think we've only right. scratched the surface well, here. I'd like to talk uh, about and him And boy, does my too. surface need scratching. <laughs> um, my thanks to uh, Charlie yeah. Sheen and, of course, George Miller and uh, Joe Namath. Tomorrow, kids, it's uh, Terry Garr and Tim McGarver. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. <laughs> guest tonight, a very funny man and a good friend of ours. Tomorrow through Saturday night, he can be seen at Max Famous Bar in Daytona Beach, Florida, and from June 15th through the 20th at Seekers. Seekers. For you scoring at home, it's Seekers in Scottsdale, Arizona. Please welcome George Miller. Hi, George. Nice to see you. Oh, okay. Shut up and sit down. Yeah. How you doing? Oh, you have a very strong hands. Well, thank you very, very much. It's been hands. a long time. Thank you very much. You're still looking for a gimmick? For a while you would come on and you would say, I'm the comedian Born. looking for a gimmick? Yeah, I've that, been doing that, that for work? about two years now looking for a gimmick and everybody's really sick of it. Mm -hmm. They don't care anything about my gimmick. And f now I'm the disgusted comedian. Oh, that's what you are now. Yeah, I'm yeah. the disgusted comedian. I am, I am, you ever have a streak where you're real uncoordinated and you can't, you drop everything? I'm driving in my car. I'm trying to eat a hamburger as I drive. By the time I get done with a hamburger, I got mayonnaise and lettuce all over the guy in the car next to me. Oh, this is, man, that's too bad. Yeah, that's I've been awful. really disgusted yeah. with myself lately. What, what else are you disgusted about? I, well, I went to see relatives up in, uh, up in, in Squirt, Washington. You know, I talked about Squirt before, a tiny, yeah. tiny yeah. town in eastern Washington. In fact, they had a, a murder there several years ago. They had a murder trial and didn't have the budget for a court reporter. Uh -huh. Everybody had to try to remember what had been said. It was really just <laughs> not, a, not a good thing. 
and I was up there with my with, with my uh, Uncle Matt, who I think Uncle Matt is the single stupidest person in the world. Now, I want to give an example of that. I want to verify that. Uh, for years, the only kind of ice cream he ever has is vanilla chocolate chip. Sure. So the other day he says to me, he says, you know, I've always hated those damn chocolate chips, but that's the price you have to pay if you want to eat the vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't understand that you could just buy. That's how dumb <laughs> right, the guy yeah. is. Yeah. Well, the guy has odd eating habits anyway, because uh -huh. he mixes Nabisco shredded wheat and grape nuts in the same bowl. Uh -huh. And I managed just to try that. I've never eaten hay and little rocks at the same time. So. <laughs> uh, anything uh, catch you fancy on uh, television lately? Anything? Oh, this I watched this Entertainment Tonight about four weeks ago, and they're reviewing movies, you know, on Entertainment yeah. Tonight now. And they got... Uh, they were reviewing Burt Reynolds' movie Malone, and Mary Hart actually said this. She says, uh, we think you might have something better to do than go see this movie. And I'm thinking if I had anything at all to do, would I be watching this sappy <laughs> <laughs> That guy started the uh, I saw that guy started the uh, uh, Then they try to insult our, our intelligence. They oh, try to, I hate that yeah, oh, I don't like it. Yeah, they, they make us feel so yeah. stupid, even more stupid than we are. <laughs> and uh, they got uh, they got this deal where they they want you to think the women are attracted to Spuds McKenzie, this ugly, hairless dog that looks like a pig with a pirate patch. Yeah, right. They were kind of murmuring as yeah. I hit the punchline. Well, oh, that was the punchline. Yeah, that was oh, the punchline. Yeah, I'll yeah. go like this next time. <laughs> it's nice that you've worked out a signal. I have, yeah. yeah. Maybe you have some semaphore flags. I that would help. <laughs> um, so, uh, what about the news? Anything? I mean, you must oh, be... Oh, that USA Today, they charge more for it than any other paper. They had an unbelievable headline about a month ago. This is true. Can John Hinckley Jr. be trusted? <laughs> oh, yeah, let's get him to babysit. <laughs> And he follows the, jo remember he followed Jodie Foster all around oh, yeah. the country? Well, I did the same thing with Oprah Winfrey, so I can't really, I can't say anything about that. And of course, have you, no do you watch the Oprah Winfrey show at all? If you do, you'll notice that when she comes on, right away they put her name on the screen, right. which I think is very helpful because a lot of people have been getting her mixed up with Della Reese. So a lot of people don't know that. And I would, why, why are they hissing? I don't know. I don't understand. I don't, I don't I think we've got that. a poison gas yeah. leak here in the and studio. And then you got this, <laughs> an ether leak, yeah. yeah. And you got this guy, now Jim Baker's been more visible lately, but a few weeks ago, the LA Times He was reported, in seclusion. He was in seclusion, yeah. that's right. How did you know that? He was, uh, he was, I don't know. He was, <laughs> he was, uh, he was reading the Bible six hours a day, right. trying to find a loophole, I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> You know, my grand, my grandparents, a lot of my, my family were real religious. Mm -hmm. Fire and brimstone, oh, you're yeah. not good, you're, you're, you're going to hell. I grew sure. up fearing that, I got to be good, couldn't be a worse possible fate. My attitude changed a few years ago. I saw that movie, The Exorcist, right. and the demon, the demon says something like, your mother does perverted acts in hell. I thought, well, maybe it's bad, but apparently they do have a recreation period. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about... Uh... More, now, that's hissing from that corner there right yeah. now. It was over here. I think we're lucky there's any reaction. <laughs> uh, now, hey, hey, hold hey. on. Now, uh, you, we have just a, a few seconds left. Is there anything you want to mention about where you'll be? I'll be uh, at the uh, Detroit Comedy Castle yeah. on uh, July 14th. Mm -hmm. Oh, he may have canceled me after this. I don't know. <laughs> July 14th uh, through the 18th. Yeah. Okay. And those hissing people are not invited, by the way. <laughs> Glad to hear your career Thank is you very so much. Good. Thank you very much. Our next guest, a very funny man and certainly no stranger to these proceedings, on Friday and Saturday, he will be at the grand opening of the Funny Farm in Louisville, Kentucky. That's the grand opening. The grand opening of the Funny Farm in Louisville, Kentucky. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome George Miller. George! How you doing? Good. I am too. Where are y'all from? I am too. Good. 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 I want to do a good show tonight. I really do. But even more than that, I want to dance with somebody. I want to feel the heat with somebody. So. 
I have no idea what that means, but I heard it on the radio, so I thought I'd say it. I like uh, uh, to talk about music. Remember Bread? Remember the group Bread? Remember when Bread broke up and became Crumbs? <laughs> You know, uh, I always get mad when people criticize the lyrics and the titles of today's songs. What about the dumb titles of yesterday's songs? What if somebody came up to you and said, Hey, I think I'm going to sit right down and write myself a letter. <laughs> oh, that's a clever idea. After you get through with that, why don't you call yourself on your own phone? <laughs> the line will be busy and I can get the hell away from you. If you've seen me before on this program, you know I'm the comic who's always looking for a gimmick, something that'll shoot me to the top. Tonight on the In the News comic, a lot of stuff in the news. In California, the freeway shootings that started several weeks ago, drivers shooting at other drivers, there were about seven or eight incidents, and then somebody took a shot at a cop. And I thought to myself, now we're getting someplace. <laughs> That's just a joke, because I have a friend who's a cop, and I knew him from this restaurant, I didn't know he was a cop. Well, I knew he was a cop, but I didn't, I didn't really know him because I'm sitting there and he says, will you pass the mustard, please? Yeah, here you go. Will you take it out of the jar, please? <laughs> that joke hasn't worked in six years. Don't feel bad. <laughs> I screwed up the setup and the punchline wasn't that good either, so don't even worry about it. <laughs> what else is going on? Oh, the tabloids. I couldn't believe this a couple months ago. This is true. Front page of the tabloids, doctor's mistake turns man into a woman. And I'm thinking, what did that doctor say when he first realized that mistake? Oh, no, ain't this a bitch. <laughs> and then Reagan's in the helicopter and the plane flies within 150 feet of the helicopter. On television, they said that the president was not aware of the incident. Gee, what a shocker. <laughs> Sometimes I watch a CNN to get the news. There's this oriental news lady, Sasha Fu, F-O-O. -O. Remember the first time I ever saw her, she says, I'm Sasha Fu. And I thought, don't be so hard on yourself. <laughs> Sasha Fu, right. Someone explaining it to another person. <laughs> and then they got all these, uh, these dumb advertisements. There's the, there's the elderly couple. It's his first day on the new job. And where is he working? McDonald's. <laughs> They're not slow enough at McDonald's now. They got to hire Maalox lips. <laughs> and the little old lady says, I just took arthritis strength buffering and now I can lift my frying pan. Well, the doctor ought to give her codeine. She could be working out with weights. <laughs> I've been trying to do better on that score. You know, I get up every day, I turn on the TV, I do, what is it, that 20 minute workout? Yeah. Followed by the 40 minute buffet and the 10 hour nap. <laughs> Oh, and I got good news. I got a small part in a new movie. It's about a boss who goes to bed with his secretary. It's called File This. <laughs> These people started the applause. Right over here, I saw that. I had a lot of regular jobs when I first went to L.A. I worked at this res restaurant called The Sizzler. I was a salad bar cheater spotter. <laughs> Well, what would happen if somebody got the salad bar and they got extra for their friends who didn't pay, I would have the person arrested and eventually they would be sent to the electric chair. So, that's why they call it the sizzler. Oh my God, what was that? I don't usually work with a band, but that was very pleasant. Reader's Digest, the August edition has sex secrets, a lot of stuff I didn't know, a lot of do's and don'ts. After making love, the man should never say to the lady, Okay, Gertrude, that ought to hold you for a while. <laughs> I enjoyed talking to you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks.
right back. Nice to see you again. Very oh, funny tonight. I forgot I'm at the uh, Atlanta oh, Punchline stop with this. in Atlanta, Georgia next week. Thank Atlanta Punchline. Yeah, the Punchline in Atlanta. You know, I've, I've known you a long time, yeah, right? but, but that ain't this a bitch joke is the worst I've ever heard. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. And that's a lot to choose from with my act, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, you've been to Florida, I, I understand. Florida. The last time I was on the show that Working I went down on. to Florida, yeah, I was at Max Famous Bar. And very nice club, but the first night there I had, uh, well, first of all, I went, I forgot to tell you, I went on Continental Airlines. Mm -hmm. And, of course, a few months ago, Continental merged with People's Express. Gee, what could go wrong? <laughs> so <laughs> I go down, and I'm there, and the first night I get, it's a very nice club, but I get a gay heckler. See, well, I don't get, maybe he wasn't really a heckler, but he, he was kind of disruptive. He had too much to drink. And I, I'm pretty sure he was gay because he kept singing real loud, I'm working my way back to you, Fred. So I was pretty sure. So, Wait a minute. Let me amend right. that earlier statement. All right. That's the worst joke I've ever heard. <laughs> so then, ignoring that, then this guy, I don't know what the deal is. I don't know what the, I don't know what the deal is. This guy is in this club in Florida, in Detroit, same guy in Los Angeles, same guy, in, not this guy, but another, not the gay guy, but another guy, uh -huh. runs up to me at these clubs, asks me the same questions. Have you been working lately? Have you been getting any jobs? Have you? Have you? Oh, probably the worst agent I've ever had. Yeah, that's no good. See, don't you hate it when that happens? Yeah. When your I, agent I get, will come up and ask so you about mad. that? Yeah, yeah, I get so mad. My Hollywood <laughs> friends and I have been very concerned about that very thing. Wait a minute. When are you going to be in Louisville? I don't have his uh, Louisville Friday and date. Saturday, yeah. Uh, this is the grand opening. Also, you know, on uh, Labor Day weekend, I'll be at the yeah, new right. Eastside okay. Comedy yeah. Club I'll in Miami. I'll be at Miami home barbecuing. At we uh, we got to go Hotel. away here. We'll be right back, folks. <laughs> Uh, I want to thank everybody who was here tonight, the studio audience, and of course, Dee Snyder, Andrea Martin, Mr. George Miller, uh, Bill Wendell, and the band. Tomorrow, Kmar, the magician, uh, Harry Shear, and Deborah Norville. We'll see you then. Good night, everybody. guest is a, a very funny man, and he's certainly an old friend of mine. He opens tomorrow night at the Cleveland, the Comedy Club. Guess where? That's right, Cleveland, Ohio. Folks, please say hello to George Miller. Oh, George! Thank you very much. How, how you doing? Good. I am, too. Where are you all from? I am, too. Good. Okay. And, you know, I am the comic who's always looking for a gimmick, and tonight I'm the religious comic, because last night God came to me in a vision and told me if I don't raise a million bucks by the 1st of November, he's going to call me Al. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. Bob Woodward would have been here tonight, but he had to go to the cemetery. He's trying to get a confession out of John Wilkes Booth. So... And I, oh, I was reading this self-help book, and they say when you talk to somebody, use a person's name a lot. It makes them feel important. I think they tell those contestants on Name That Tune to do that. Betty, I can name that tune in one note. Tom, you're a lying bastard. <laughs> and speaking of that, I think Senator Biden should have uh, kept on in his race for the presidency. I think he made a mistake by dropping out. See, if he was unsuccessful, no problem. Then he could just go around telling people he's the president. <laughs> and I was in, uh, they were talking about the earthquake last Thursday. I, uh, my mom was in town when the earthquake occurred. I had taken a sleeping pill. I slept right through it. She has not let me live it down. I did everything I could to wake you up. I yelled at you. I screamed at you. I couldn't wake you up. You spoil the whole earthquake for me. Does your mom make a big deal out of everything? Would you like a cracker while I've got them out? Oh, yeah, Mom. Wouldn't want to blow this golden opportunity. <laughs> I'll 
Are you, are you like me? You think the media just gets one subject and they beat it to death? They just never let up on it till you get sick of it, right? Wouldn't the media have been in their glory if the Pope had paid a visit to Elvis's grave? I, I uh, watched an old Elvis movie on television last night, and as I watched, of course, I took a whole bunch of different kinds of drugs. I know Elvis would have wanted it that way. <laughs> no, I didn't actually do I took aspirin. That's the only kind of drug I took. But uh, I was kind of confused when the Pope visited because they said we were paying millions of dollars to guard the Pope, but the Catholic Church is against protection. So I was a little bit confused there. I... <laughs> Did you see the story in, it was Philadelphia about a month ago, this is true, a guy was charged with, with seven murders and they found six of the bodies in his apartment and then his landlord asked him to move. I mean, some of these landlords, it's the least little thing. <laughs> yeah, it's right there in the rental agreement, not more than three dead bodies in one apartment. It's right next to no pets. <laughs> And I was watching the Inquirer ads on TV a couple of weeks ago. It was like, uh, why Sean Penn is terrified of getting AIDS in prison. Oh yeah, that's a real mystery. <laughs> Here's my favorite, favorite commercial. Excedrin is the strongest medication you can buy without a prescription. You want to bet? I gotta tell you a story, it's about 10 years ago, because I have no current activities. I was, in, <laughs> I was in Phoenix, and I was working with Tom Jones, and somebody said, well, don't say Tom Jones, because it makes you sound dated. So about 10 year ago, uh, years ago, I was in Phoenix, I was working with uh, the Beastie Boys. And, <laughs> and I had this blind date, and it was disastrous. She had this little growth coming out of her face, and she kept saying, I just don't know what that is. And I'm thinking, science doesn't know what that is. <laughs> and we went to this restaurant, the slowest service in the history of the world. People were complaining, anorexics were starting to get hungry. It was really... <laughs> and a special of the day was Swiss steak. I ordered it, it turns out to be nothing but hamburger. Now, you wouldn't know as well as I do when you complain in a situation like that, the management, they always have a statement of policy. They'll try to bluff you out with it, don't let them do it, stand your ground. And the manager comes over and he says, well, that's our Swiss steak. I said, it's hamburger. He says, well, that's our Swiss steak. So I paid the bill with a gum wrapper. Told him that was my money. <laughs> Enjoy talking to you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Yes, sir. Oh, you left out half that plug. When you play at the Cleveland Comedy Club, Cleveland you Comedy automatically Club. the next week go to the Akron Canton Comedy mm -hmm. Club. Munici municipal facilities, are yeah, they? That's, that's my Buckeye tour. Yeah. What is it? Uh, municipal faci uh, facilities. You look, you look great, George. What did you do? Join the Danish Navy? <laughs> but seriously. By the way, last time. Don't, don't, laugh, don't laugh at that. That's not nice. Don't laugh at that. The Danish Navy? Last Thank you. Night, Thank you very last, much. Last, yeah, time. last time I did a joke. And you said publicly, while cameras was on, <laughs> that is the worst joke I have ever heard. Right. I want to tell you something that <laughs> reading that phone book is the worst bet I've ever seen. <laughs> but, but I we, thought you couldn't... But we I, have an hour here. We're trying to true. fill up an hour but any I, way we can. I thought you couldn't get any lower than what's Hal wearing, but you've managed to overcome <laughs> that. <laughs> Uh, how you been? How, I'm is, doing good. You know, yeah, uh, good I watched the part of the documentary. This uh, PBS the station PBS in documentary, Seattle yeah. did a documentary about yeah. you, and I saw your mom, and it occurred right. to me I haven't oh. seen her in a long, long time. Well, you know, I, I'm going up, up there. I'm going up on October 22nd to Seattle, where I'm appearing at Giggles oh, Comedy right. Nightclub. Everything's <laughs> a plug here. And uh, my mom. Look is, at I'm, this. You're done. Look really? At this, this man tells us you're finished. That's it. That's Bob Rooney. You had Bob Rooney Day <laughs> one time. That was not, another boring thing on your show. That's not Bob. It's not Bob Rooney. Jeff Sama. Does he look like Bob Rooney? No. Looks nothing like Bob right. Rooney. I got one more joke. No, you don't have any time. Oh, we got the roach guy right. from Philadelphia. Oh, I up. saw those roaches out there. Oh, sorry. So you'll be in the Cleveland. Cleveland, Canton, Ohio, Seattle. Oh, also All just right. for All grins right. in Fort Worth, Texas. I get right. $400. We'll be right back, that. folks.
But Paul, can you imagine that waking up in the morning uh, having the hot breath of a rabid bobcat right on on the side I of your face, and, may, and maybe occasionally some spittle flies off his. That would his have been snout. disgusting. <sighs> and amazing. Did Making that, that noise? Did it happen? Well, no, it didn't happen. Didn't really. But happen. just, I mean, think about it for a second. I mean, it could. I've seen bobcats up there in the yard. If they were able to get into the into the house, and if in fact they were, I would have needed a tetanus shot. Yes, you would. Not to mention that painful series of injections that you undergo if you're ever bitten by a rabid beast. I understand. So did, <sighs> did that really happen then? No, it didn't happen. Ah. No. Well, no, it didn't happen. Just if it had happened. Oh, yeah. It would have been terrible. Oh, are you kidding Gee, me? That would have been horrible. Now, you know what I have here? See? See? That's... That's what it would have sounded yeah, like. Yeah, that's only a fraction of how awful that would have been. Ah. Because he's right there on the pillow next to you. <laughs> I have here... Oh, we don't have time for this, do we? Oh, we got to get it? our first guest out here. No, we don't have time for this. But here, tomorrow, we'll do this. I have here now a complete rundown of all of the contestants and their talent for the Miss America pageant. Mm. By state and talent. So if you were to call out a state, I could tell you the name of the woman and the talent. But Let's we, just do one. Let's no, do we, we don't have time. Do we have time? Yeah. All right, call, call out a state. state. All right. Alabama. 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 Well, it's right here on top. Jenny Jackson should be playing the piano. The Warsaw Concerto. I, I love the Warsaw Concerto. <laughs> you, can't, you can't help but dance when you hear that. That'll New York? All right. Yeah. New York. Um, no entrant this year. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm looking for New York. Mia Semenoff, ballet, gypsy variations from Esmeralda by Drigo. Yeah. I love, I love Drigo. Drigo. What? Hey, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, one more here. No, no, I'm going to pick one. North Carolina, Lee Beeman, uh, should be dancing to something from Cats. Jellicle Ball? Oh, yeah. Is it, did I pronounce it correctly? <laughs> Let's bring our first guest out here. Excuse me. Thank you. What the hell is that? That's the earthquake. That's it's something the earthquake. upstairs. Yeah. Uh, our first guest is a uh, good friend and a uh, funny gentleman who uh, has been a regular on this program over the last uh, five or six years. He, he will be appearing on the first, second, and third of September at the Toledo Comedy Club. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome George Miller. <laughs> Nice to see you. Last nice time I saw you it was in uh, California. Yeah, we did that uh, yeah. comedy uh, store amphitheater yeah. 15th anniversary show, and he told me I was dressed like Opie Taylor. Right. So that's... Yeah. And I got a ticket that night and was shoved around by cops. That's what I heard about yeah. that, yeah. yeah. But uh, so now you're here in New York, you must be doing an awful lot of traveling. I Things was, have never been better for you, have they? Well, I wouldn't say that. No, I wouldn't say that. But uh, I was going to do a lot of comedy clubs, and I wanted to mention, you mentioned I was going to be at the Toledo Comedy Club just for future reference, Monday night at the Toledo Comedy Club is always low self-esteem night. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, if you have real low self-esteem, you get it for half price. Uh -huh. And I always, I always do a lot of audience participation on that night. If you're garbage and you know it, clap your hands. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, give and, the people what they want. Well, so, well, somebody asked me, they said, is low self-esteem, is that the same as being insecure? And I said, right. I don't think so. If you have low self-esteem, you think you're scum. Sure. If you're insecure, you think you might be scum. Uh -huh. <laughs> I do a little facial expression yeah, sometimes. Yeah, and right some now. gestures. Very little, good. Little gestures, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And I also have a, uh, a small role in a new movie. It's called The Sequel, Part One. And uh, <laughs> so um, I have been uh, traveling all around yeah. the country with my wife and daughter. She's 13 now, and my daughter is four, so it's working out. Uh, good. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Actually, I travel around with MJ, who's my, you know MJ, you've met her many times. She's my uh, girlfriend, she's my PR lady, she's my agent, and uh, uh, I was a little bit disappointed. I, sh I guess I shouldn't even talk about this. A couple of years ago, I went on the road, and uh, I found out that behind my back, MJ had had several dates with uh, Carl the Truth Williams. And uh, I, I, 
You know, I, I, I've forgiven her now, but it's all right. I just made that up. I just wanted to say Carl the Truth Williams. Is it Williams? Did I get that last name? I don't know. The boxer. He's the boxer. Yeah. But, uh, now, why would that have been a disappointment? Oh, I have no idea. I'm just babbling, hoping something funny will come out. <laughs> so I, we didn't get that kind of we time. We don't have that much time. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I wanted to comment one thing. We have this very nice uh, limo service, ambiance limo service. I have nothing to do with the limo no, service. No, I wanted to compliment you. Oh, I wanted okay. to compliment you. Very nice people. Uh, they picked us up at LaGuardia yesterday afternoon. The driver was Danny, uh -huh. not the brightest guy in the world. I got off the plane. He's holding up a big sign with his name on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, you know right away that it's Danny. Some, some, yeah, well, that's true. I didn't yeah. know where he was. Yeah. And um, so we come over, and in front of us, there's a car that says, a student driver, Sears Driving School. Sure. Kind of like humiliation on two levels. <laughs> <laughs> and we get to the hotel, and uh, I go into the hotel. I couldn't believe this. Who's the hotel? Vidal Sassoon. Oh, Vidal Sassoon. Is it Vidal? Well, sorry, I would have yeah. called him Vidal. Yeah, it's Vidal. It's yeah. Vidal Sassoon. And Vidal what? the Truth Sassoon. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I went up to him and I said, Mr. Sassoon, I'm kind of worried because I know if you don't look good, I don't look good, and you don't look good. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. The guy in the red shirt started you. Yeah. <laughs> After your commercial, we'll be right back to George Miller. the elections you've been following the uh... i've been pretty interested in uh, political stuff since watergate remember mm -hmm. watergate it was yeah. just tearing this country apart i right. couldn't eat or sleep my hollywood friends and i were very concerned about Watergate. <laughs> and, you have uh, no friends that, that was the uh if you in case you've forgotten that was when the republicans bugged the democratic right. uh, headquarters i think they were trying to learn the secrets of being out of office <laughs> and uh, <laughs> And uh, so you got George Bush, and I, re uh -huh. I read several years ago when George Bush jogs, he wears a t-shirt that says George Bush USA. Right. So I guess if he gets lost and somebody finds him, eh, eh. <laughs> I make noises too, you yeah. know. And uh, Dukakis, I read an article about him a couple of months ago in Time Magazine. They said that his wife had this amphetamine problem, this diet pill problem for years. They got married. He discovered the problem 11 years into their marriage. Hmm. That's what we want in the White House, a speed freak and a guy who's observant. <laughs> Thank you, right? A smattering of applause. A little, tiny bit of yeah, applause, yeah. yeah. And I saw the Persian Gulf thing it was interesting, I think. Uh, right after the Persian Gulf thing, this is true, this is not a joke. Well, now, what Persian Gulf thing? Well, which, we're, which well thing? I'll, I'll explain oh, that okay. as I go along yeah. here. Larry King uh, was interviewing Congressman Robert Dornan, and Dornan said if the Iranians who are in this country don't like it, they should go back where they came from. Mm -hmm. And Larry King said, maybe they're afraid to fly. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pretty funny. I thought pretty Larry good. King, yeah. yeah, he's usually about as funny as running your toe in a furniture. So I thought that no. was pretty good. Pretty good, I thought. And uh, because I am, I try to be real current. I, I'm, yeah, that's oh, my sure. gimmick tonight. Are you I'm still the, looking for a I'm, gimmick? Yeah, I'm the in the news comic. Uh, as we speak right now, Detroit is holding an election, and on the ballot is whether they should legalize gambling or not. Right. Oh, yeah, and they're talking about having casino gambling that's in That's right, that's right. And then uh, last week I read an article and they said the opponents say no because they say it would bring uh, poor role models, prostitution, and organized crime. And they certainly don't want those things in Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> now, now what, is, what is your gimmick now? I made a statement there. Yeah, you did. Yeah, it was very exciting. <laughs> what, what is your gimmick now? Uh, I, I was the bothered comic for a while, right. and then I was something else, and I came back to being the bothered comic. But now uh, you're the what? I'm the bothered comic again. So that yeah. is your gimmick? Uh, well, no, I'm still looking for a gimmick. The so, gimmick is I'm looking for a gimmick, and that's not working either, and I don't know what the hell to do, yeah. to tell you the truth. I thought maybe the gimmick was this pink sweatshirt. No, this isn't it. This is not It's a lovely thing. item, though. Thank you very uh -huh. much. <laughs> I'll tell you what, bo ask me what bothers me. What does bother you, George? I, you think the same person does the hair of Ronald Reagan, Buster Poindexter, and Woody Woodpecker? <laughs> <laughs> More applause from this uh, section. How, uh, uh, how, how is your social life these days? Well, you know, I was anti-women for a long time. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One time I took out a cross-eyed girl and bought her a whole bunch of drinks just so I could keep saying, here's looking at you, kid. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh huh. That's the end of that one. <laughs> yeah, I see. <laughs> and um, you know, romantic uh, activities. How, well, how do you I, do you there? Well, I live with my friend MJ, uh -huh. and we've already discussed the problems there. 
And uh, I was kind of anti-women also because I read this article one time. I thought this was interesting. A guy got 99 years for some kind of crime, and then the next day his wife divorced him. Right. I mean, talk about running at the first sign of trouble. <laughs> boy, oh boy, oh boy. That's really unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this couple next door, they don't set a very good example. They've been married for years, and they're always having big arguments over very important things like who's more thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> What about sex? Oh, my God. I got a new sexual etiquette book. Yeah. A lot of do's and don'ts I wasn't oh, familiar sure. with. <laughs> After making love, the man should never say to the lady, Okay, Gertrude, that ought to hold you for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. Anything else? I had one thing from the paper. This is my favorite article of the year. No, wait, no wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's, this, there's another one. I want another one on this topic. Another on sex? Yeah. Well, I had this blind date one time. No, that's not the one. That wasn't the one? <laughs> Let me think. <laughs> Let's see. Into the file. No, Let no. Let me see. It was, it was a new else. joke. Oh, gee, I don't remember it. Oh, George, come what on. What was it? I'm going to read my paper now. This about one. about an older man and a younger woman. An older man and a younger woman? Yeah. That would be me and MJ. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's no joke there, believe me. <laughs> My favorite article of the year from USA Today. We're word for word, police said that Kurt Allen of Seattle, irate at not getting his social security check, shot a clerk and security guard at the post office. Well, that ought to speed things right along. <laughs> George Miller, boys and girls, George Miller. Nice job. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the uh, program, ladies and gentlemen. In just a minute, George Miller will be here, Ernest Borgnine will be here, and Darlene Love will be here. Paul, we have the smartest, most best-looking audience in the world. <laughs> smartest, best-looking audience in the world. The smartest, you say the... The smartest and best-looking, and best I am the tallest talk show host in America. Is now, the doc... Is the doctor... Remember, Merv Griffin was technically bigger than I was. <laughs> But I was always taller than Merv was. Is the Dr. J show off the air now, then? <laughs> I don't know what... Oh, yeah, it Julia may be. Show? But look, I have one of these tonight. You have the... That's... You have yeah. the... This is a cheap way to generate hydroelectric power for the entire Northeast, just by doing this. We could light the entire eastern seaboard with that. It's wonderful. This you know, know what a... that's called? Well, of course I know what it's called. It's the v uh, vibra slap. Vibra slap, also known as the jawbone of an ass. Really? That's absolutely true, yes. Oh, no kidding. And, and what makes that noise in there? There's something in there. It's a little, uh, originally, I think it used to be an actual jawbone of a donkey with teeth rattling. Really? And now it's been, you know, synthesized yeah. and midied. Because they, they, outlawed, they outlawed donkey teeth years ago. That so. must have been what it was. But we have one of those if we ever need it. If we need it, okay. Yeah. Uh, before we bring out George, I understand Hal has a little something for us this evening. Our director, Mr. Hal Grunwald. Hal, are you in there? Yes, Dave. What is it? It's a Hal Gurney Network time and killer, Paul. Do we have music for this? Music, Paul. Fun in. Oh, there's Hal. Hi, Hal. How are you? Hi, Dave. Yeah. What do you have for us tonight, something Hal? Something very special, Dave. Uh -huh. I have some footage of Dan Quayle eating lunch. You want to see that? Dan Quayle, Dan Quayle eating, lunch. eating lunch. Roll it, Vice Hal. presidential candidate Dan Quayle That's eating guy. lunch. That's the guy. All there right, Hal, let's uh, take a look. There it is. President Reagan. He's Can you see that, Dave? Yeah. yeah. Here he is. Lower left-hand corner. There it is. Oh, my God, it is. It's Dan Quayle. The, back the, pres the president, president appears talking. to be speaking. He is, he's talking. Yeah. He's Everyone else seems to be paying attention. Yeah. This guy is obviously there just for the free lunch. Which I think was his early campaign slogan, wasn't it? I'm just here for the free lunch. Pretty heavy with the butter, wouldn't you think? Yeah. yeah. But, I, but I'm sure he's paying attention, wouldn't you? This goes on for another hour, Dave. It goes on for another hour. Dan Quayle, ladies and gentlemen, eating lunch. Silliest thing I've ever seen, Dan Quayle eating lunch, ladies and gentlemen. 
Uh, anything else we got to do here? I guess we're ready to roll. Our first guest tonight is a regular visitor to these proceedings. Uh, tomorrow through Sunday night, you can see him in, per in person. He'll be performing at Giggles. That's right, Giggles. Boy, he, he must be doing something right. He'll be at Giggles in Seattle. Ladies and gentlemen, please say hello to our good friend George Miller. Uh, you always dress yeah. uh, quite colorfully. Oh, thank you very much. And tonight much. is no exception. No, tonight is no exception. I wanted to mention, I did have another plug. I know that you're uh, kind of, you're not crazy about doing plugs. Anti-plug. A little bit anti-plug. Uh -huh. Sometimes I've noticed you'll have somebody on, and you'll say kind of proudly, you'll say something like that, uh, <laughs> that uh, they're, not, they're not plugging anything, they're just here because they like us. That's right, sure. Well, first of all, they don't like you that much. Uh -huh. And second of all, they're out of work. So <laughs> See? <I'm excited> <laughs> but you will be at Giggles. I'll be at the Comedy Castle in Detroit also oh, the next Castle. week. Next week, right. And then the Atlanta Punchline on so, Thanksgiving week. I'm all done with them now. So okay, for you, it's, it's a national tour of dumps. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very uh -huh. much. Um, <laughs> yeah, get him. Get him. Gee, they even boo you when uh, you have your own uh, show. That is, uh, that is really amazing. Uh, so tell, now, uh, you were always, uh, you would come on the show and you'd be looking for a gimmick. I'm still looking for a while. Uh, since I left you last, I became the hip comic. Yeah. I thought of myself as the hip comic, and then somebody said, you can't do that because uh, they pointed out that for a long time I thought Bon Jovi was a cologne, mm -hmm. so I cannot be no, that. Couldn't be said, hip. No, no, if you not if you think Bon Jovi. So now I'm the in the news. In the news. I'm the in the news comic. Uh -huh. You were always talking about Dan Quayle, and remember a few we weeks had ago. Him eating lunch. Did I you just see saw that? that. I was yeah. back there watching him eat lunch. A few weeks ago, Bush defended Dan Quayle. He said, "Okay, he did not go to Vietnam, but also he did not burn the American flag or his draft card. All right. It's like I shot the sheriff, but I did not shoot the deputy." Uh -huh. so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And then my, my uncle Lewis came to. I met uh, Uncle Lewis. You met Uncle Lewis. Yeah, Los Angeles, Los Angeles, years ago. Yeah. And he announced that he is going to vote for Bush. Hmm. And I said to him, "Well, Uncle Lewis, does this mean that you do think that you are better off now than you were eight years ago?" And then he reminded me that eight years ago he was in prison. Oh, so it's, sure, of course he would yeah, be better than yeah. A little bit better well, off. How yeah. come he had to go away? I remember well, hearing it was about something that. Something about some phony checks. Yeah, <laughs> I see. Yeah. It wasn't but, a check kiting scheme, was it? I don't, I'm not sure about that, but it was <laughs> some kind of trouble. I, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then, and uh, on with my in the news uh, portion oh, I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> Timothy Leary. Remember Timothy Leary, who advocated? Oh yeah. Thank you. LSD yeah. use in the sure. '60s. He yeah. wanted that. And uh, he paid 35000 bucks so that after he dies, they're going to remove his head and then freeze it, mm -hmm. you see. Now, does this mean we'll never quite be rid of him? Or... <laughs> and his wife told him, don't put it off, have it done now. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mayor Koch here. We're still in the news. We're still in the yeah, news. we got right. one more okay. to go in the news. For people scoring <laughs> at home. <laughs> Mayor Koch, your own Mayor Koch, said, don't give the vagrants money. They'll just use it to get high. Yeah. Gee, I thought they were going to build roads and schools. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The second applause. Uh -huh. The second applause since I've been on it. <laughs> you look like you might be later going to officiate an Australian rules football contest with this little outfit. You never stop with those clothes, <laughs> Joe. I'm sorry. Years and years and years. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you've been watching a lot of television? Oh, always. Have I you seen the television. new fall season? I haven't seen the new fall season. I always watch entertainment tonight oh, sure. because I always like to know what's coming up next. They always promo a lot. John Tish one night said, when we come back, we'll show you why Milton Berle is twice as funny as you thought he was. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, well, no, because two times zero is still zero. So that, <laughs> that wouldn't exactly work, too. Now they're booing me. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Will the band be close behind? Yeah. And then uh, Bob Costas. I've been watching him on this new show. It's There's on, a show right after ours, I understand. Right after your show. It's called Later. Mm -hmm. And by the way, uh, NBC is also giving me my own show now. It's Congrats. called Never. So. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Be sure not to watch for that. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, uh, uh, <laughs> thank you. And then uh, <laughs> Siskel and Ebert, of course, are still always at the movies together because neither one of them can get a date. Uh -huh. And uh, 
Well, see, a lot of people get them mixed up. Cisco is the one without too much hair, and he's very intense. And the other one is Ebert, who was last year's winner in the National Little Dumpy Guy contest. So. <laughs> who sponsored that? I think that was uh, the Ice House in Cal. I don't know. The Little, little, little guy Dumpy guy, guy yeah. contest. That was another plug. Uh, we have to do a, a commercial, but we'll continue here with uh, George Miller. We'll be right back. Have you ever met Ernest Borgnine? I've never, I've seen him in here. From Here to Eternity, I yeah. think it was. Well, or was it Marty? No. Maybe Both. it was High Noon. <laughs> well, I don't know. I haven't yeah. seen a movie since Shane. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. I don't since get out of the Shane? house very much. I'm always in my room. I feel safe in the room. <laughs> uh, you come over if you ever find out where I live. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Who oh, are these people? Uh, delivering coffee. Oh, thank you very yeah, much. You have to order it days in advance <laughs> in New York. Uh, thank you. Uh, so where were we? Well, we were talking about TV. Television. There's yeah. one commercial that I, I was wondering if you'd all seen. Two guys are walking down the street. Uh, this is for a drugstore, by the way. Two guys are walking down the street. One of his name is Fred. He falls over with a heart attack. Mm. His friend who's telling the story dashes into the drugstore to get heart attack pills. <laughs> and he says a great line. He says a great line. He says, I don't know who was more scared that day, me or Fred. <laughs> well, my money's on Fred. <laughs> Yeah, I think a guy who's dying is a little more shook up than somebody running an errand. <laughs> but but you say you can now get heart attack pills. Yeah, that's what it said. I on, didn't on, realize this was that. For you just go in and you get heart attack. I'm pills. just reporting on what I saw. So that pretty much uh, removes the fear of heart attacks forever. Well, I know I don't have it anymore. Just that's have true. a couple of heart attack yeah. pills and they, it's like a ac got acne it. medication. Got There's yeah. one more for primatine mist. The guy actually has bronchial asthma so bad he doesn't have enough breath left to blow out the match. So then he uses primatine mist and then he can blow out the match. Mm -hmm. So like. Get this medication. Either that or go like this with a match. <laughs> Maybe I should start going like this after every joke. No, it's a very, it's a very useful tip. I appreciate that. How's, how's your personal life? Well, I'll tell you something. Everybody, it's not just mine. It's just everybody's personal life. Pat Paulson, did you read about him? He's no. getting a divorce. Oh, I didn't. I'm sorry. Yeah, to hear his that. wife has a restraining order against him. She can't telephone him or come within 500 feet of him. Wow. Gee, that must be hell. <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you something. I'm getting to the age now. I can't always satisfy a woman, but with my behavior, I can usually get her out of the mood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And if you don't appreciate that, you will eventually, so just hang on. <laughs> is, is that like a permanent change? That's probably a permanent uh -huh. change, yeah. Uh, I've been to several doctors. I don't know what's wrong. Have you uh, <laughs> been up to Seattle lately to see Mom? I'm going up there. Well, I was up there about a month ago. My the mom Northwest. now. The Pacific Northwest. Pacific Northwest. Northwest yeah. the, what, the Emerald, Emerald City. City yeah. That's right. My mom now has her own business. She's in the Yellow Pages under I Can Spoil Any Occasion. <laughs> And I thought my mom would love to be interrogated by the police because the police make you tell the same story over and over and over. And even though I'm, what, about 67 now, she still, <laughs> she still sends me to the store, at the, de the department store recently, and they got a big threatening sign, which I hate. You may be fined $500 for shoplifting, sure. which is actually a good deal because I always try to steal at least $1,000 worth of merchandise. Yeah, so it's like a sale for you kind then. Of a sale, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and uh, I had to buy her some Maalox. Did you ever have to drink? No, never had Maalox. Yeah. Now on the bottle it says, great new taste. Oh, yeah, I'll bet it's nectar from the gods. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh -huh. And uh, <laughs> uh, read any good books lately? You're right. It is kind of peaceful in here. Yes, You're it is. Right. It's, it's downright serene. <laughs> it's like camping, isn't it? I just read uh, George Steinbrenner's uh, new autobiography about his childhood. It's uh -huh. called I Never Had a Pet I Didn't Kill. Oh, I didn't, uh, no. didn't realize that was out. Yeah, that's out. It's, it's a fast edition. And then uh, I like those medical uh, articles that they, that they have in the tabloids. I fainted in my sleep and mm. didn't know it. <laughs> and I had one thing. Is this your big closer here? This, well, <laughs> go to the paper. I don't think we should say that. It's the big closer. This is from the New York Times. This is a, a one ad I didn't quite understand. Six-figure income, challenging position, work with interesting people, glamorous offices. Some lifting. <laughs> that was my big closer. I didn't it know it, but it was my big closer. closer. 
It's George Miller, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. Almost midnight here at KCEV, and it is hot, mega hot. But have no fear, the chili DJ is here, and the request line is open. Talk to me, please, baby. I'm in the mood for something misty. Uh, what did you have in mind exactly? Seagram's Lime Mist Cooler. A refreshing composition. This song. Uh... George Miller is here. Ernest Borgnine is here. Have you ever met Ernest Borgnine? I've never. I've seen him in here. From Here to Eternity, I think yeah. it was. Well, he, was it he Martin? Martin? No. Maybe Both? it was High Noon. <laughs> well, I don't know. I haven't yeah. seen a movie since Shane. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. I don't since get out of the Shane? house very much. I'm always in my room. I feel safe in the room. <laughs> uh, you come over if you ever find out where I live. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Who oh, are these people? Uh, delivering coffee. Oh, thank you very yeah, much. You have to order it days in advance here in New York. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, so where were we? Oh, we were talking about TV. Television, There's yeah. one commercial that I, I was wondering if you'd all seen. Two guys are walking down the street. Uh, this is for a drugstore, by the way. Two guys are walking down the street. One of them's name is Fred. He falls over with a heart attack. Mm. His friend who's telling the story dashes into the drugstore to get heart attack pills. <laughs> and he says a great line. He says a great line. He says, I don't know who was more scared that day, me or Fred. <laughs> well, my money's on Fred. <laughs> Yeah, I think a guy who's dying is a little more shook up than somebody running an errand. <laughs> but but you say you can now get heart attack pills. Yeah, that's what it said. I on, didn't on, realize this was that. For you just go in and you get heart attack. I'm pills. just reporting on what I saw. So that pretty much uh, removes the fear of heart attacks forever. Well, I know I don't have it anymore. Just that's have true. a couple of heart attack yeah. pills and they, it's like a ac got acne it. medication. Got There's yeah. one more for primatine mist. The guy actually has bronchial asthma so bad he doesn't have enough breath left to blow out the match. So then he uses primatine mist and then he can blow out the match. Mm -hmm. So I. Get this medication. Either that or go like this with a match. <laughs> Maybe I should start going like this after every joke. No, it's a very, it's a very useful tip. I Thank appreciate you. that. How's, how's your personal life? Well, I'll tell you something. Everybody, it's not just mine. It's just everybody's personal life. Pat Paulson, did you read about him? He's getting no. a divorce. Oh, I didn't. I'm sorry. Yeah, to hear his that. wife has a restraining order against him. She can't telephone him or come within 500 feet of him. Wow. Gee, that must be hell. <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you something. I'm getting to the age now. I can't always satisfy a woman, but with my behavior, I can usually get her out of the mood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And if you don't appreciate that, you will eventually, so just hang on. <laughs> is, is that like a permanent change? That's probably a permanent uh -huh. change, yeah. Uh, I've been to several doctors. I don't know what's wrong. Have you uh, <laughs> been up to Seattle lately to see Mom? I'm going up there. Well, I was up there about a month ago. My the mom Northwest. now. The Pacific Northwest. Pacific Northwest. Pacific Northwest. Yeah. The, what, the Emerald, Emerald City. City yeah. That's right. My mom now has her own business. She's in the Yellow Pages under I Can Spoil Any Occasion. <laughs> And I thought my mom would love to be interrogated by the police because the police make you tell the same story over and over and over. And even though I'm, what, about 67 now, she still, <laughs> she still sends me to the store, at the, the department store recently, and they got a big threatening sign, which I hate. You may be fined $500 for shoplifting, sure. which is actually a good deal because I always try to steal at least $1,000 worth oh, of merchandise. Yeah, so it's like a sale for you kind then. Kind of a sale, yeah. yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> And uh, I had to buy her some Maalox. Did you ever have to drink? No, never had Maalox. Yeah. Now on the bottle it says, great new taste. Oh, yeah, I'll bet it's nectar from the gods. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh -huh. And uh, <laughs> uh, read any good books lately? You're right. It is kind of peaceful in here. Yes, You're it is. Right. It's, it's downright serene. <laughs> it's like camping, isn't it? I just read uh, George Steinbrenner's uh, new autobiography about his childhood. It's uh -huh. called I Never Had a Pet I Didn't Kill. Oh, I didn't, uh, no. didn't realize that was out yeah that's out it's, it's a fast edition and then uh i like those medical uh articles that they that they have in the tabloids i fainted in my sleep and mm. didn't know it <laughs> and i had one thing is this your big closer here this well <laughs> go to the paper i don't think we should say that it's the big closer this is from the new york times this is a, a one ad i didn't quite understand six-figure income challenge in position work with interesting people glamorous offices some lifting <laughs> <laughs> that was my big closer. I didn't it know it, but it's it wasn't my big closer. closer. It's George Miller, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back.
Thank you very much. Our next guest is a very funny man and a good friend of ours who uh, visits us here regularly this Friday and Saturday. You know, Paul, Michelin makes pretty good tires. We understand you're upset Michelin about Michelin and almost any service station anywhere will sell you a pair of tires. Uh, set so, of tires. Yeah. So we understand. Pirelli, yes. good tires there. I'm sorry that Bridgestone, happened. there's a good name in tires, sure. Firestone, I think, is still in business. We're very sorry about <clears> this. <throat> um, my next guest is a very funny man and a good friend of ours. Uh, who visits us here regularly this Friday and Saturday, January 6th and 7th. He will be at the uh, George McKelvey's Comedy Club in Denver. So you know he's doing something right. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome George Miller. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Uh, you ever do this? Uh, you're in a, a restaurant and you have a, a vegetable, let's say it's corn, and they bring it to you, and in there with that corn, there's one pea. Uh, and I'm never sure, is this a mistake? Is this a bonus? Did the pea get in on a pass? What the hell is this one pea deal? I, I don't know. What about this? Those late night record offers on television. Original hits by original artists. Oh, no, no, I want secondhand flops by thieves. <laughs> I got a son by thieves. <laughs> Try to pay attention over there. I, by who? <laughs> I, I got a son who's, they don't pay attention. I got a son who's 12 years old. What a smart aleck that kid is. I said, what do you want to be when you grow up? He said, homeless. <laughs> Kids today got smart mouths on them. I got a nephew in the fifth grade. They have an old maid school teacher. You know what they call her? Miss Seven Up. Never had it, never will. <laughs> I know one thing is 1989 starts, money and fame don't bring happiness. Look at poor Bruce Springsteen, wakes up with a sheet soaking wet and a freight train running through the middle of his head. <laughs> what kind of symptoms are those? I've been kind of depressed the last few days. I read this article, it said your car reflects your personality. I don't have a car. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know what that's for, but... Thank you. I've been going all around the country. There's a lot of people, they don't want to do their jobs or they're too stupid to do their jobs. I was talking to this cab driver. He was dumb and a know-it-all. You know people like that? He says, yeah, those paramedic trucks, they go real fast. A lot of times they run into people, then they go back and pick them up. That's how they get most of their business. So I'm in this hotel. True story, no joke. I said to the desk clerk, could I leave a wake-up call for 11? The guy actually said this. 11 o'clock? I said, no, 11 a chicken. <laughs> hey, Larry, Daryl, and Daryl are out there. They really are out there. <laughs> and there's a company, you know by their name they're not going to do anything. U-Haul. <laughs> U-Haul. I, <laughs> I, <was watching, laughs> I was watching Phil Donahue. Uh, he had uh, people who had been married a lot of times. And he said to one guy, he said, to what do you attribute the fact you've been married to the same lady three different times? And the guy says, poor record keeping. <laughs> <laughs> and what about these orgies where everybody does it with everybody else? What would that be like and what would you say afterwards? Well, was it as good for them as it was for us? This couple next door in California, you know, they've been married for years. He's an alcoholic, but she sticks by him. She keeps saying, I think he's going to change. Oh, yeah, from Jim Beam to Jack Daniel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, if you've seen me before, you know, I'm the comic who's always looking for a gimmick. For a while, I was the questioning comic. I had a lot of questions I couldn't answer. Does a moron know that's what he's called? <laughs> he's watching television, and somebody uses that word. Does he kind of perk up a little bit? You have Alzheimer's, you get partially cured, then do you have some Heimers? <laughs> Does Richard Dreyfus really have a nerd brother named Doofus Dreyfus? <laughs> you ever get high and go to the supermarket and wish Campbell's soups were in alphabetical order? <laughs> A 
And the... Wait. The Surgeon General has warned, do not smoke grass and then try to find something you've misplaced. You could go insane. <laughs> what about this? You get out of the shower, start to blow dry your hair, but after just a few seconds, you turn off the hair dryer because it produces some kind of a noise which makes you think you heard the phone ring. <laughs> Is that the devil? What the hell is that? <laughs> David was making a lot of Dan Quayle jokes, but I didn't think that other guy, that Lloyd Benson, he was no prize either. He looked like an old moldy guy from a horror film. <laughs> if he died in office, how could you tell? <laughs> when he said to Quayle, you're no Jack Kennedy, Quayle should have said to him, you're no Boris Karloff. <laughs> I think I'll get off on that one. I enjoyed talking to you. Thank you very much. Nice job. Nice to see you Thank again. Thank you very much. Thank Doofus you. Dreyfus. Doofus Dreyfus, yeah. You subscribing to Weekly Reader now? No, no, no. I knew that was the kind of a, a corny joke. Kind of a boy's life yeah. kind of joke. So I saved it for your show. Thank you very much. <laughs> how, was, how was your New Year's? My New Year's was good. I had my usual New Year's Eve. I uh, had a can of Hormel chili and went to bed. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Halloween was good. Halloween was great. I gave uh, diet pills to all the trick-or-treaters. It was really... <laughs> not only could they not eat their candy, they were still busy knocking on doors at 5 o'clock the next morning. <laughs> I see. <clears throat> so what else you've been doing? Uh, let's see, what else have I done? Well, I was trying to do some acting lessons. Really? It's well, a lot of nice. people, they always say to me, they say, because uh, uh, this is a sweatshirt, but a lot of times I'll have a, a sweater and a collared shirt, and people yeah. say, why do you always wear that? And the reason, of course, is you probably know, is my favorite comic's always been Mort Saul, mm -hmm. who would always wear yeah. a sweater and a collared shirt. It's kind of like I'm out of style and I copied. Yeah. It's kind of a... Um, <laughs> let me ask you a question. Who, <clears throat> what kind of people... You didn't pay no attention to that joke. <laughs> what kind of people drink uh, Diet Pepsi? Oh, uh, the kind that are fat and thirsty. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> See, if you do the setups and I do the punchlines, that doesn't work. I know, but I just like that we're joke. Not like I'm a sorry. Team. Any, uh, Although I would like your context. Any uh, anything stand out in your mind from 1988? <clears throat> the worst. The, I think the worst ad on TV. You have these nine seven six numbers are all, uh, all over, and yet you can get like a wake up call at your own house mm -hmm. instead of a hotel. It's two dollars. What a horrible idea! You're not even out of bed yet. You're already a deuce in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> a deuce in the hole. A deuce in the hole. Anton, yeah. a deuce in the hole. Thank you. Uh, that would have worked good in stand-up. Yeah, right? no, it would have. Now let's uh, take care of some of these plugs. You're going to be at... Uh, Judge's Chamber. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. The January 6th through the 7th at George McKelvey's Comedy yeah, Club. Yeah, that's, that's Friday and Saturday. But now what kind of guy names it after himself? Well, a guy who uh, he wants to make sure you don't get it mixed up with the other comedy clubs. Right, right. The Ralph O'Brien comedy clubs on the other end of town. And he's skimming a bundle, isn't he? Yeah, he's making and, a lot of And deals. also, uh, January 24th, uh, 20th through the 21st, Judges Chambers in Norfolk, Virginia. Norfolk, Virginia, and Ricky Cheeks is the owner there. I wanted to mention him, and he has uh, had a lot of bad luck. <laughs> bad luck? He's got a lot of bad luck. Excuse me, just a second. What would that be? Oh. Somebody cleaning their outboard motor? What the hell? Huh? That's all right. What is it, Al? What exactly is it? It's our latest gadget. We were going to surprise you with it. Well, what is it? What does it do? It's a compressor. We've cleaned everything around and build up things. That's what the yellow hose is? That's what the yellow Well, let me see it now that you brought it up here. <laughs> all right, turn on the compressor, Al. <laughs> And it's just, it's just air, and you clean it up? Yeah. So, like, stuff like that? After the, after the thing went off? Yeah. Take that up to my home, will you?
art imitating life, or, or vice versa, although it'd be hard to call it art. Hell, hard to call it life, isn't it? Uh, our first guest is a uh, very funny man and a good friend who will be uh, preforming this very Saturday night in the main room at the legendary comedy store on Sunset Boulevard, located in the heart of Hollywood in Los Angeles, California, one of our southwestern states. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to this program, George Miller, right here. George Miller right here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen you in quite a while. Everything all right? Oh, yeah, everything's going pretty good. Uh, thanks for that, uh, that yeah, comedy store. Yeah, the store. comedy store. Oh, yeah, the yeah. main room, a big place, 600 yeah. seats. Giant, giant yeah. room. Where you and, and I started together many yeah. years ago. I've worked there since the spring of 1923. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the reason I like it so much is because you have so many famous people Drop by. Yeah, they drop it. Martin Sheen was the, one of my favorite actors. Yeah. I almost didn't recognize him. He wasn't being arrested. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> then we had Don Johnson. Don who Johnson, I, I also, Miami Vice fan. Yeah, I also met him on your show, and it was unbelievable. He was so, what do you call it, gracious. He mm -hmm. came over to me when I was on your show right up there in that hall and said that he was a big fan of mine. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, but then he kept calling me Steve. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> And Roseanne Barr, of course. Oh, she, very, yeah. Very famous. Used to work at the comedy store. She, she still, still does by? that. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, she always had a weight problem. A lot mm -hmm. of people, don't, even when she was a kid, and her parents, they didn't do anything to discourage her fatness. She'd go home for lunch every day. Her mom would fix her Lipton tub of soup. Oh, we'll see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you got to lay down the law at oh. some point. I had a. I had a, you know, I used to use that joke with David Jackson. Uh -huh. I mean, you remember that growing up? I would say David Jackson. Right. I had the tub of soup. Uh, I switched it because Roseanne got hot. And she's famous. Yeah, that's more, more famous than David Jackson. Much more famous. And that's called the illusion of having new material. I see. <laughs> I went out. I went out with uh, Roseanne one time. Really? Oh, oh not she's, on a date. Yeah, she's big and strong. She squeezed my head so hard my contacts popped out. It was, uh, <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> I had expected more on that one. Uh -huh. I really did. I was very disappointed. <laughs> the you image of being uh -huh. squeezed yeah, and I, yeah, injuring yeah, a sure. couple no, people was yeah. the second part. Very, of it. very graphic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what about uh, anything in the news catch your interest here lately? You were in the news. Oh, he was, was on a front page. This woman, uh, as everybody knows, lived in your house, and. Uh, <laughs> You know, I talk about my uncle. You know, when I was a kid, I had a woman living in my house, but it was mom. Mom! Yeah. Oh! <laughs> so I, well, I want to pre preface this by saying that uh, when you, when you uh, fly around, I fly around a lot, momentarily you forget sometimes which city you're in. Sure. And my Uncle Lewis, for instance, he says sometimes he can't remember if he's in jail in Milwaukee or <laughs> Philadelphia. He <laughs> by... Uh, <laughs> I mention him sometimes on the show, and I ask him, I said, do you like me talking about you on television? He says, oh, yes, and it's so flattering. Thank you very much. <laughs> anyway, uh, he, unbelievable coincidence. You probably won't believe this. He saw the lady who lived in your house, her picture in the paper and her name. He called me up. He had a date with her several years ago, about six years ago. <laughs> true, true. No, and Yes, it is true. No. They hit it off. They like the same things. In fact, the next day, they both moved into Larry King's. <laughs> So they kind of found that they had oh, these things in common. You are not the first person. She oh. has rarely been at her own home. Uh. Uh, so are you still looking for a gimmick? Have you oh, found? I'm always, yeah. Because I'm, there for a while you were sort of the comedian in search of a gimmick. I was trying for some, I was going to be the impressionist comedian. Right. Gee, we don't have enough of those no, people. Yeah. Uh, I have two impressions I'd like to do tonight. Very quick ones. This is Clint Eastwood at a comedy club. This guy stinks. Uh -huh. And I have one of... Uh... <laughs> no, I hadn't expected anything on that one. That's the <laughs> and I have you. This is David Letterman, impression of David Letterman in prison. How much time we got? How are we doing on time? <laughs> That's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, we got to go. We'll be right back here with George Miller in a couple of minutes.
George Miller is with us. Mike and the Mechanics and Lorraine Bracco. 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 Right. Bracco. Except right. no substitutes. Always get Bracco. Bracco. Yeah. X for it by name. X for it, yeah. Bracco. Right. How long will this go on? I got We're more jokes. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, when you asked me what's in the news, I forgot uh, this George Bush, see. I what do you mean, this George well, Bush? This, you mean, this, this you mean president. the president? Yeah, ah. yeah according to... <laughs> George Bush, according like he's a drifter. To, <laughs> according to uh, uh, Time magazine, uh, uh, President and Mrs. Bush, sometimes referred to as the Bushes, uh, <laughs> they... Uh, <laughs> What's I don't know why. Mean? I don't know. It always gets a laugh. I, I look at the audience, say, the bushes, and they uh, laugh. They I don't laugh, know what yeah. it is. So according to Time Magazine, uh, of course, they've never been noted for their accuracy. But anyway, <laughs> uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bush wake up every morning uh, to country music. So they see. start their day. Yeah, that, that way they're assured the day can only get better. <laughs> not, uh, not true. I actually... There's nothing mean, wrong. No, nothing, yeah. because uh, I like country music. I, I have uh, Protein Blues by Little Pork and the Fat Balls. And, um, mm -mm. see now, mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, we rushed right along to get yeah, to this. Uh, <laughs> so, now, I don't know what Mr. Bush's, or the drifter, as you called him, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what his policy is going to be with the Soviets. Reagan had this policy I never understood. It was called trust but verify, which right. I don't and understand. Dealing with the uh, Russians. Yeah, yeah, dealing with the Ruff Russians. Because, see, if I trust my girlfriend when she says she was home by herself last night, I don't have to verify by checking up, which right. I did, and she's a lying bitch. <laughs> And? and also, yes, I haven't found my gimmick yet. That oh, was good. Back to the one. gimmick, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, now, you know what? I'm the insult... Oh, wait a minute. I'm the intelligent insulted comedian tonight. Uh -huh. So many things have been... In. Jay Leno, our friend Jay for these corn chips. What is it? Uh, keep on crunching, we'll make more. Sure. Gee, I thought when I got full, the factory shut down. Right. I was very... <laughs> And that, and that dear I Abby... I think your factory may have my, my shut, down. shut down. Many years ago. <laughs> <Old> George Miller <laughs> joke factory. And, wait a minute. Suffered some layoffs here lately. You know, people ask me about him. They always say, what is he like off stage? Because sometimes we'll socialize. I swear to God, he's just the same. You're just the same off as on. We go out after, but he's making wisecracks. He's doing jokes. After about an hour, I swear to God, my face is always sore from fake and laughter. It really is. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> I got more. Oh, let's see. What well, you're going to be in the main room of yeah, the legendary I, comedy also store, at the Hano Sunset Boulevard. Right, that's right. A Saturday night. You and I and used to live across the street from that place. Yeah, I'm trying to keep dump. that. I'm trying to keep that under my hat. And uh, I'll also be at the Honolulu Comedy Store on. We uh, didn't live together. We had separate apartments. The Honolulu Comedy Club. <laughs> On uh, April 18th. Sounds right? like a good gig. You're telling one deal and I'm doing another one. Yeah, it <laughs> makes know. no sense Nobody's whatsoever. Nobody's paying attention yeah. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you know your ratings better than I do. I don't know. <laughs> you can forget about dinner now. Uh, it's George Miller right here, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. guest is an old friend of ours who comes by periodically. He will be preforming tomorrow through Sunday night at Max Famous Bar in Daytona Beach, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a very funny man, George Miller. George? You look like you uh, may have put on a little weight. I haven't seen you I was, in quite a Yeah. Uh, by the way, I wanted to say I'm very glad to be here tonight because all my life I wanted to follow open fly and eat me date jokes. So, uh, <laughs> this is the night. This is the night. <laughs> well, we'll just see how you do. You got yeah. your work cut out for you. I did. I gained some weight and I... Uh, I eat this cereal late at night. I get this variety pack where uh -huh. they got the ten in a pack individual oh, yeah. servings, and you eat your favorite ones first, and then you get down to the last pack, and it's always product nineteen. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I've been noticing a lot about weight. I notice in movies. I saw Mississippi Burning. Oh yeah, yeah Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman, right. ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, 
And uh, I notice in uh, movies, white southern bigots are always overweight. Are they? Yeah. yeah. What do you want to do tonight, Jed? Well, let's discriminate and then grab a cheeseburger. <laughs> A little acting, yeah. one of those acting yeah. pieces. Uh, work some of that eat me date stuff into oh, your I'll material. Try. <laughs> uh, and the gimmicks, are you still looking for a oh, gimmick? I'm for a while you were the, uh, was the bothered in, comic. The bothered yeah. comic, then the in the news, yeah. in the no, or the out of work comic out of for work, a while. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm, uh, tonight I'm the ticked off comic. Ticked Boy, off. there are so many things. This Mike Tyson, he things says. got the, your dander up. Mike yeah, Tyson. dander up. Yeah, Mike Tyson, he says the best punch he ever threw was at Robin Givens. Mm. About two months ago, he was accused of hitting a parking lot attendant. Right. I think uh, a few more of these warm-up fights, he's going to be ready to take on a vagrant who has the flu. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, would that be a flu-ridden vagrant? That would be the same thing, yeah. a vagrant who has the flu. Try it the other way once. <laughs> when you go down there to vagrant. Daytona, try All right, it. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a try. All right. yeah. And if it doesn't work, I'll put it in the inactive file <laughs> and eventually sell it to a new guy just starting out. Okay. <laughs> I'm really ticked off about, well, maybe you saw this in the paper. This really made me mad. Did you know that the leader of the skinheads mm. is Mr. Clean? Didn't know that. Didn't know that. That was in the newspaper. Shouldn't huh? have brought that up, I don't think. <laughs> I'm real ticked off at Dear Abby. She thinks she's so hot stuff. Around the holidays, she actually says this. She says, my New Year's resolutions column has become an annual tradition. Huh. Well, move over Santa and the Christ child. <laughs> I can see that you're really ticked off. Oh, I'm, I'm just fuming. I can hear it in your voice. I, I'm just fuming. The maddest I ever got, though, this was about, I don't think you know this story, about five years ago, I, was, I ran out of dough in a strange town. I had no money. I didn't eat for three days. I'm starving to death. I panhandled 50 cents. I put it in a vending machine. I'm standing there trying to decide which would be more filling, a candy bar, peanuts, potato chips. Before I could decide, some wise guy walks by and pushes gum. <laughs> Boy, was I ticked oh, off. Man. Oh, man. Oh, man. And that's the very definition of a wise guy, too, isn't that's it? That's right. Or a smart ass. Sure. Whichever. You can say smart ass. Now. Uh, now, do people ever get offended when you do jokes about them? We have trouble with that on the program sometimes. Yeah, I did a joke on your show a couple of months ago, and I talked about the fact that uh, people, they don't give a damn about their jobs anymore. It's, yeah. it's rampant in this country. There's a company, you know by their name, they're not going to do anything. U-Haul. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Says it all. So I do the joke, a guy calls me up from U-Haul complaining. I said, hey, it's just a joke, sure. Mr. Doolittle. <laughs> I don't think this guy was real bright anyway. He, we got to talk and he said he lived on the West Coast and he said he would never live on the East Coast because the end of the world will be three hours earlier. So you gotta... <laughs> He was buying himself some time then, in other words. What does that mean? I don't oh, know. Oh, I see. But you did. You got the talking. Well, that's darn did, nice yeah, of you. Yeah. yeah. Um, just get in from Los Angeles? Just got in from Los Angeles. I'm seated between two people. This lady here never shut up the whole six oh, hours. Yeah. Showed me some small dental floss, some small size. Yeah, yeah. She says, I always take this with me. I put it in my purse when I'm on the airplane. Right. Say, hey, good idea. Wouldn't want to get loaded down with that regular size <laughs> dental floss. <laughs> Then there's a guy on this side of me who's, who's a cop. The guy's a cop, and I don't know if you know this, but I was a cop at one time. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize Los, that. Yeah, really, you were a police officer? Yeah, years ago. Where was I was, this? this Seattle? Is, no, this was the Los Angeles PD. No and, kidding. Yeah, I was, PD. I was fired Jeez, after about three that. days uh, because it was a guy way up on top of a tall building right. threatening suicide, mm. and I shot him. No. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a judgment call. It was one of those, uh, yeah, yeah. So they, did they lift your shield yeah, for that? Yeah, I was off just like that. I was completely gone. And after You're that, I saw... Yeah, that's right. And uh, yeah, what I really hate about these airplanes, besides sitting in the middle there, was uh, uh, they insult your intelligence How's on that? these planes. Well, well, they always make... <laughs> and how would you know? Your comments... Oh, my... Oh, it's sweatshirt boy I right heard, here. I had heard your new apartment was decorated in early jerk. I didn't know if it was true, but I thought it was. Anyway, so they always make these announcements. They say, uh, for those passengers with connecting flights, see an agent at the gate. Well, thanks. I usually just wander around hoping to spot a plane that's going my way. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. Tomorrow night, you'll begin the big gig down there in Daytona Beach. I have more plugs at, in that also. At uh, Max Famous yeah. Bar. And July 3rd, I'll be at the right. Atlanta Punchline. And next week We're at the Funny Bone we'll in right back here with Rochester. Miller, ladies and gentlemen.
That's right. Why would you have No, I have no more, more jokes. Are you no, sure? I'm joked out. Well, what about, yeah. what about the people down there at Max Famous Bar in Daytona? Well, they'll have to pay, uh, I think it's a $2 cover charge. Yeah, but if they said, George, do us another joke, you'd do them another oh, joke. Oh, no way, no way. No, really? I, I usually play large outdoor stadiums. I want that intimacy <laughs> of Max Famous Bar. I see. Uh, arenas you're working these arenas, days. Arenas, yeah, uh, arenas. And sports shows. Festival seating, yeah, of know. course. Uh, my thanks to everybody who is uh, here tonight. And tomorrow, Andrea Martin, Jackson Brown, and... Uh, Phil Corrington from the Chicago Field Museum. Good night, to bring out another little friend on Dave's Broadway cavalcade. Yes, indeed. <laughs> let's see who it is. I guess my papers are in order, so let's just bring him out, shall we? Our next guest is a uh, very funny man who will be uh, performing at Harrah's in Atlantic City along with Steve and Eddie on November 24th. <laughs> Steve and Edie on November 24th, 25th, and 26th. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to this program our old dear friend, George Miller. Come on out, George. Always Stephen Eden. Stephen Eden. I got that wrong. Yeah. I'm sorry. I actually stayed in their house in Las Vegas a yeah, long time right ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, By the way, I got a late bulletin. That lady who likes to live in your house was released. <laughs> Oh, yeah, God. so if I were you, I'd put another shrimp on the Barbie. She will be, uh, do about 8 30, I think it is. Yeah, maybe you put together a pitcher of mimosas and we'll just see what happens. Uh, well, how you been? Nice to have you on the Thank show. You've you been much. watching the news. Boy, this must be a great time for you with all the news. craziness Boy, going on. Zsa Zsa Gabor, you know, now I, another late uh, bulletin. She and the, the cop that she slapped are going to guest star together on an episode of Who's the Boss? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and you got this abortion thing that's just uh, hot and heavy. And somebody said to me, are, are you pro-life? Sure. I said, not if it's Richard Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> Bill and Wendell started the applause. Right? You know? And uh, what is, what's going on with Ted Koppel's hair? It looks like it's getting bigger, like it's eating his head. <laughs> you notice that? So. What's going on with your hair? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. I yeah. didn't stick it up. Sometimes it just controls itself. <laughs> I see. Uh, and are you having a good time in New York? I'm having a good time in New York. You know, I've had a love affair with the city since 1922. <laughs> uh, no, we flew in from Las Vegas. I work Vegas 40 weeks a year, you uh -huh. know. And, uh, well, maybe a couple weeks. But, um, I, you know, I don't like flying. I'm not especially afraid, uh, but it is very confining. And they always, they always give you this announcement. The captain has turned off the fasten seat belt sign, so you are free to move about the cabin. Gee, what a blast. <laughs> Why don't I just go to that little bathroom and hang myself? <laughs> What a blast. What a blast. Uh -huh. That's my new gimmick as, as slogan. As the kids what a say, as what a kids blast. Say, yeah, yeah, I want to try to make myself younger. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, then on the plane, I couldn't believe this. To cut the time, to make the time go faster, I am sitting right next to an exotic dancer. I had oh, never met him. Yeah, a, that's great. And I found out a lot of exo exotic dancers, they pick their stage names to sound similar to those of famous people. Like there's right. Joni Carson, there's Dina Martin. Sure. So I'm talking to this exotic dancer, so horny Weaver. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, uh, you're, you're sort of proud of that, aren't you? Sort of yeah. proud of that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> little word joke, yeah. yeah. I know, well. yeah. Uh, I wanted to mention, you guys were talking about flying. I have a real major complaint against an airline. I'm not, not going to mention the name, but they are, as you would say, I think, money, gr is it money grubbing pigs or money grubbing scum. scum. Yeah, probably. And they have owed me... Uh, this major airline has owed me 180 bucks for over a year. They will not pay, and because they are money-grubbing pigs, and I can't say the name, but I can tell you that it is an American airline. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I, I hope you're able to settle up with them. And, well, I'll tell you, I, hopefully I'll be back on your show again in a few months, and if I don't get my 180, I will be retelling the story. So. <laughs> 
Uh, are you still looking for a gimmick? Now, for the longest time, three, four years now, you've come on telling us about the various gimmicks, gimmicks that you're trying right, yeah, yeah, to yeah. gain some that attention. That doesn't work at doesn't all. Really, that doesn't, yeah. No, I said, people will say, uh, uh, do people come up to you at airports and restaurants and say, have you found that elusive gimmick yet? <laughs> and the answer is no. Uh -huh. No one has ever, the idea sucks. Uh -huh. It was always bad, but uh, I, I'm continuing it. I'm, oh, tonight I'm the television comedian. Oh, sure. Yeah, and I always watch a lot of TV. I watched you late at night. You had a comedian on, was sitting right where I'm sitting yeah. a few months ago. And you got a big laugh because he wouldn't wait for the questions. He would just do his material. Right. Just and you kept going. You finally got a big laugh. You said, well, I might as well not even be here. Yeah. Right. And I was thinking, fat chance of that. <laughs> and then... <laughs> oh, well, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I mean that in the most positive, positive way, way possible. I know, I know. I know. Uh, so then I, then I switch, and I watched the uh, very latest, this is true, WTBS, and they had on, uh, well, first of all, they said we now, it was about 1 o'clock in the morning, and they said we now uh, rejoin our, what is it, regularly scheduled program, sure. now in yeah. progress, uh, and it was actually a Three Stooges movie. Mm -hmm. Gee, I sure hope I can pick up the thread. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll tell you what, hey, hang on a second. Okay. Save, save that thought. You're going to sit in with a band. No, we, no we're not doing that done? again. Oh, all right. oh, we have to uh, do a commercial, and then we'll be right back. Sure. All right. Now you're going to be someplace. We at Governors in Levittown tomorrow night, uh -huh. and Governors in Stamford, uh -huh. Connecticut, Friday and Saturday, and Tulsa and Oklahoma City the first two weeks. Jokers uh -huh. in uh, first two weeks of November. Thank you. Good enough, George Miller. Thank you, everybody. Good night. <laughs>